My, the, the Mrs. World pageant has been alive since the 1970s, but Australia has never taken a part until 2009. I was really happy and proud when I won. My first dose of reality, though, was just before I flew to Vietnam for the world final. I was being interviewed by a 20-something male journalist from Sydney, and he said to me, but you're married. You're never going to be like Jennifer Hawkins. And I felt like I'd just disappeared off the radar. It was very confronting. Then I realised, yeah, you know what, you're right. I'm never going to be like Jennifer Hawkins, because she's a kid. Um, she's never experienced half of what I have seen half of what I have. I've travelled the world, got myself a law degree, walked the fashion runways of Italy, taken in the distant Himalayas from Missouri, sat on the edge of the Taj Mahal, smelled tea gas during a civil riot in Bahrain, and I've had a child. Come to think of it, Jennifer Hawkins hasn't got anything on me. <laughs> so that's when I realised that it's all a matter of ignorance and perception. Some people think that women lose their identity and autonomy and become part of the furniture when they get married. And ours is apparently a developed secular society. From that interview onwards, I decided I wasn't going to conform to what society assumed I was going to be. I've enjoyed so many opportunities and met some incredible women since Mrs. World Australia. My mother-in-law, Praveen Varma, for one, she's a fighter. My lovely friend, Divya, who just continues to amaze me by taking over the world bit by bit, bridging the gap between India and Australia more and more with every single thing that she does. My good friend and pageant sister, Sabrina Hasami, whose passion, poise and personality continues to inspire me. To the amazing women who organised this event tonight and brought us all together. And finally, to my daughter, Sahara, who reminds me daily to challenge everything, question everything, and by God, never take no for an answer. <laughs> I think all of us, no matter who we are, have special women in our lives. <laughs> women, <laughs> women create the family, the home. They nurture, repair, unite, and love. On top of that, women also occupy senior roles in the Australian banking, finance, marketing, commercial, higher academic, legal and government sectors. We raise the future generations and pass on lessons from our own life experience to our kids. It follows that the underlying messages in those lessons will affect our children and their future. One would hope that one day all of those lessons would be good ones, positive ones. You're special. You can be anything. We'll always be there for you. The world is your oyster. You're precious, we love you. After the way I've just described the incredibly unique role of women in society, it hurts to know that in some parts of the world, baby girls are tossed away like garbage simply by virtue of their gender. That young girls are exploited, kidnapped, and treated like a disposable commodity. What are the messages these girls are receiving from the people around them? You don't matter. Nobody loves you. You have no rights. You belong to me. Your life is worthless. Now imagine how these kids see their future. Simane's India Project Red Light Green Light is doing such amazing work at grassroots level to change the messages that these young girls are receiving to more positive ones. There are people out there who care about you. You're not worthless and you do have a future. I'd like to thank the United Indian Association and CMA from the bottom of my heart for doing what so many are happy to turn a comfortable blind eye to and to help me change the world's future one girl at a time. Thank <laughs> you.